But uh, you want to talk about Scott McTominay? Yeah, I think in the last few games, he's. I mean, he's kept Casemiro out of the team the last two. In in, I know it's a winning run, so he's leaving the team the same. But I think he's been outstanding. I think he's. Um, I've never. His desire to get back into defensive positions and help his defence. The amount of crosses he heads out, and the amount of blocks he makes, and the amount of runners he tracks. Talk about doing a job for the team. Talk about putting a shift in. You know, if if anyone wants to think negatively about him, then go and watch United's last three games and watch him. Well, let me say something about that, because on social media yesterday, Arsenal fans, and they're very loud on social media, were laying into Scott McTominay, and they were highlighting him, in their words, getting away with stuff that... Fouls. Yeah, um, and I don't think he did get away with them, but he did commit fouls. But they were saying that that proves there's a, an anti-Arsenal agenda, which I mean, actually made me laugh out loud. Let, let's just talk about this for a second, because he was committing fouls. Uh, there was one where he grabbed hold of an Arsenal player who dramatically ended up on the floor. Mm. I'm not quite sure the foul... It was definitely a foul, but I'm not quite sure he needed to end up on the floor. He was booked and a free kick awarded for that, so he's not getting away with it. He does commit a lot of fouls, but he's a central midfielder. He's, he's one who's destroying opponents' well, he, play. He's, he's been booked nearly every game, apart yeah. from one, I think. Nobody's but, been, nobody else in the Premier League has been booked more than him. No, and he'll get a ban for it, so he'll get punished. But when you're trying to keep your place in the United side, and you're trying to turn round a couple of losses early in the season, you want everybody at it. Yeah. Well, I mean, United fans will love his performances the last few games, because although he's never going to be a Michael Carrick and have the elegance of my, someone like Carrick, you know, with two feet playing out through the lines from the back, that's not what he does. Mm. But he, he, he'll give everything to destroy and stop the opposition scoring. He'd be a nightmare to play against the way he is at the minute. He's, he looks full of energy, full of confidence. He's got two ballers around him in Fernandes and Eriksson who are, who are doing the other stuff. Um, he's At the moment, it's a great problem for Ten Hag. And he deserves credit, Ten Hag, for leaving him in. Well, I think that Casemiro, when he came on at Leicester, you see his first few touches, mm. I mean, they were golden. I mean, that was... It oh, was, he's a special... He's a, he's a, they were unbelievably he'll go, good. He'll come in the team. But yeah. what I'm saying is, for Ten Hag, he's giving McTominay now a little platform where he's playing great. Mm. He'll come out, I'm sure, at some point. But what, that'll do him the world of good. Because it's... You know, him and Fred have been ridiculed for a long time. And actually, when United were even under... Uh, even the first two games of the season, but, but the last season or two, when United losing games and people ridiculing them. If every if every one of the United players put the same energy and commitments into the games as McTominay and Fred, they'd have been all right. Because mm. they've got talent. It's just that them two aren't like midfielders of United old. Well, it's funny that um, the, they were two of the players. I think there were only three players, but they were the two, McTominay and Fred, that Wayne Rooney he did an article, didn't he? About, oh, he did, yeah. yeah and he yeah, picked yeah. those two out, saying yeah. that they will always give you 100%. He also picked out McGuire, saying he's, he's a trier. Um, yeah. The rest he was like scathing of, and that was the night they beat Liverpool, and the, the day after that article they beat Liverpool, and it turned around. But what tactically has turned it around for Manchester United? What's Ten Hag done? Do you think? Well, he's 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 put he changed the back four, didn't he? Mm. And he put the uh, the young lad in at left back instead of Shaw, and then he put Varane in as well, who's been absolutely outstanding. Varane, brilliant. Did he? Was it Varane made the mistake for the goal? He gave the ball away for the goal though. The um, goal yesterday. Somebody, somebody will correct me if I'm wrong, but play, maybe. But he's, but he's been outstanding. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the back four's settled, mm. and it looks aggressive, and that's fine. The other thing is they're not continually playing out from the back and trying to look like yeah. Man City or Ajax. They've started launching it when they need to, making much better decisions. He's been much more pragmatic since that uh, Brentford game against Liverpool. That was obvious, playing counter and, and not letting Liverpool come in pressure because that's the worst thing and got the win but then even in the other games they haven't been stupid and fallen back into that trap of thinking they're a great side and they're going to play out from the back and they still when the team drops off like Southampton they dominated a bit more in terms of possession but against Arsenal dropped off not not like worried about what the fans are going to think if they drop off and don't press them, drop off, drop off, wait for the moment, bang. Because what have they got? They've got pace up top, mm. abundance of pace, great on the counter, and they've got two players who can see a pass in Fernandez and Eriksson from anywhere. So he's thinking, well, for now, that's working, and that'll get us results. Over time, of course, what you're going to find, now they've got a bit of confidence and a bit of fear factor back, teams are going to go there and drop off. Then it's a whole different problem. It's another, another way they're going to have to adapt. But he's done it. He's done. He's become more pragmatic in his in his the way they're playing, which was definitely the way to go. 
He's got a settled back four, which of course helps. And to be fair to him, he's got them working. He has done something. He's spoken to them, or he's done something. He, he has got them motivated mm. by hook or by crook. Whatever he's done, he's got them putting in a shift. And that's half the battle when you've got quality players. 